in the NCAA tournament. He's a little tight against Robert Morris, but he's loosening up, I think, in this game. Butler, a tough rebound underneath. And a whistle and a foul is going to go on Don McLean. Morris is going to be a key for both these teams. Louisville has some great leapers. Mitchell Butler, a big jumper for UCLA. Don McLean picking up his first person. He cannot afford to get into foul trouble. As you see the final scores from earlier today, most of the pieces of the 16-team puzzle are already in place. So we got one more to set for you here in Arizona. Both teams pretty deep on the bench. Holman goes outside, and the jumper goes for Greg Miner. Two nothing, Louisville. Redney double team. Thought about it from the corner. Murray, their leading scorer. That's why. Tracy Murray ties it at two. UCLA has to be patient in their half court game against the quickness of Louisville. Down low, Morton lost the handle, picked up by Edmund. There's a lot of quick players checking in the passing lane that you feel like cannot afford to telegraph the passes. McLean, this is outside. And the ball knocked away by Murray, it'll be Louisville ball. You know, the two big guys for the Bruins, Murray and McLean, you think that they would post up a little bit more. They're very good outside players. But they also need rebounding for those guys offensively. Legree with an air ball. And a whistle and a foul inside. Those of you waiting for Syracuse and UMass to tip it off, you'll be going to that game shortly at the 5.04 tip-off. Here in Kentucky, Arizona, the number one seed in the West UCLA tied. Just a couple of minutes into the game with the eight-seeded Louisville Cardinals. Sullivan inside. Walked with it. Two turnovers early against the Cardinals. Dennis Tom was saying yesterday that because of the schedule, they played Tulane earlier in the year, lost at home, and they struggled at home because there was so much pressure on them, and they go on the road and then beat Tulane by 15, so they feel confident against UCLA. And of course, this is a rematch of a regular season game, won by UCLA, 78-64, back in early February. Henry with another steal, his second of the game. Kyle said he, you can really see the difference when he got on the floor. He really has a leadership quality. Butler from three. Butler didn't score Friday. He's got three already. Struggled, only had four free throws and missed all four of them. Did not play a lot of minutes. Coach Harris had a big talk with Mr. Butler as far as what to expect from him in this game. Holden holds it outside against McLean. Waiting for some help. He gets double teamed and puts it up anyway. Murray, the rebound. Last out of bounds, last shot by Everett Sullivan. John McLean passed Newell Cinder on the all-time UCLA scoring list. Only two more points for the Pac-10 against Sean Elliott. Murray, doubled on the baseline. Louisville in his own. Some of that drone they used the other day so successfully. Maxim's outside and up and over. With 16.45 to go, first half, 5-2 UCLA. You want to break the zone with the outside shooting, but you also have to be in some kind of penetration to kick it in and then kick it back out to a free shooter. Louisville, with all that speed, although they don't work on the zone very much, they can really swing around the perimeter against the team. And they showed that in their win over Wake Forest. Jumper outside, one goal, Butler the rebound. Mr. Butler did not start last time these two teams met this season. Rodney Zimmerman was the starter. Butler came in, had a real good game, 10 points and 5 rebounds. And a foul. We'll go on with Reed. Here's Don McClain. 6'10", senior. The winner scored for you from early today. Number one, Virginia, continues to hope.
to get back to the Final Four. Fourth ranked West Virginia by one of the Clemson and third ranked Purdue. And Tyus Edmonds starting over Sean Carver, which put Gerald Matkins in the number two spot and as a shooter. Matkins took one from about 32 feet away, but the rebound he got and dipped off to Butler, who's got five. So what helps is that Matkins also is able to pass the ball. Here's Morton. Dwayne Morton. The guy we talked about who had the 20 point outing against Lake Forest has his first basket. One of the three top four year kids. McLean lost the handle out of bounds. Timeout. 15 31 to go first half for Murray. Strength on the rebound, but he lost it. And Louisville gets another chance, and Murray blocks it. Quite a sequence for Tracy Murray. Matkin, three. Edney kicks out, and Butler penetrates. Great move, baseline by Butler. Butler, highly recruited out of high school. They thought that he was one of the top players, more so than Harold Miner. Now well, he's showing some of his stuff. He's just had a difficult time, but here's the sequence we saw before. Big rebound by Holden and a nice block from behind, Tracy Murray. But Butler's had a difficult time at UCLA, kind of playing out of position. He's had to play center at 6'5", which he did in high school, but he's had to guard the big guys, too. There's your Pac-10 all-time scoring leader. Don McLean with that shot passes Sean Elliott, former Arizona star, and now San Antonio Spurs. Not bad company when you pass Lou Alcindor at UCLA and then pass Sean Elliott in the Pac-10 annual. Seven point Bruin lead. Sullivan wheel. Nice move off the glass for Everett Sullivan. UCLA much more aggressive in pushing the ball than they were against Robert Morris the other day. Well, we talk about the type of opponents that they play against and they know which teams that they have to get up for. Not that they didn't get up for Robert Morris, but he was just a little cautious against Robert Morris. 2,556 for Don McLean of UCLA, and he's all alone atop the Pac-10 all-time scoring chart. We should mention Lou Elsinger did it in three years, not four, but as Don's wife, uh, wife mom looks on, excuse me, and she's got to be happy for her son who's put up some awfully impressive numbers in his four-year stay at UCLA. LaGree. Edney up and an Edney almost stole it all. One thing Tyus Edney can't afford to do it. 5'9 and 5'10 is jump and try and block shot. Take himself out of the play. 15 on the shot clock. Sullivan. Three won't go. And saved by McLean. Usually you tell players not to save underneath the basket, but good ball movement right there by Don McLean getting it to one of his teammates. 11 6 Bruins. Murray, three-pointer on go. And Miner all alone there for the rebound. Louisville offensively, they haven't been really getting the break going, but they have been very patient on offense, passing ball around, setting a lot of good picks, waiting and taking time for that open shot. And one of the worst shooting teams any comes ever had as far as field goal percentage. In fact, it went from worst to second worst over the course of the last two days with their performance against Wake Forest. And they're having a hard time buying them today. Three out of 12 from the field. You can really see the difference in UCLA as far as their intensity level. Really coming out to play in this game so far against Louisville. There's a 2-3 zone by Louisville. They're so effective on Friday. And you see, they can really hustle around those perimeter passes of the opposition. That's the kind of pass you want to get inside of your high post, low post, and then just kick it back out. Murray worked hard to get in low and then kicked it back outside. And 15 on the shot clock. 11 6 UCLA, 12 minutes to play first half. Murray. They might just clear out and let him do his thing. With three on the shot clock. Missed it, and Miner got the rebound. Nice job on defense by Louisville. Let's see if they can finally convert on the offensive end. Miner with the left hand. McLean the rebound. Butler's been the hottest shooter so far. 
Edney had that one blocked. And here comes LaGree. Leaves it for Miner. And he's fouled by Murray. Murray picked up his first foul. Both teams did a good job. When they have the fast break opportunity, that time Louisville saw it and made good passes inside. Since Murray was first personal, trying to block another shot. Penetration a little bit too deep at this went a little bit one-on-one as far as his decision making might not have been very good on that possession there and he can't match Legree strength wise that's for sure as Miner hits his third point out of Sandersville Georgia Greg Miner a 6'6 sophomore that one comes out McLean the rebound Wayne's done a nice shot on the boards early. 11-7 Bruins. Try to feed inside. That one knocked away. Here comes Louisville three on two. Legree does it himself and doesn't connect. And Matkin pulls it off. Tracy Murray with a jam. Get good and a foul and a chance for a three-point play. Great pass by Mitchell Butler. He does so many things out on the his play goals. So in facing the basket, you saw Tracy Murray wide open down low. Troy Smith checks in and Greg Miner goes out to Louisville into the line is Tracy Murray. Already with four points in the game, averaging 21 and a half on the year. And the Bruins look much more into this game than they were the Robert Morris matchup on Friday. Murray completes the three-point play. And with 10.50, CLA with 10.40 to go first half. Brad Nessler and Ann Myers, Tempe, Arizona's final game of the West Regional. And a trip to the Sweet 16 in Albuquerque at stake. Everett Sullivan, double team. Got it down inside. Nice turnaround jumper by Troy Smith. Brian Hopkins also checked in for Louisville to go with Smith, Sullivan, Morton, and Legree. UCLA with Edney, Matkins, Murray, Butler, and McLean. They're starting five on the floor. Murray from 17. He's got it going today. Good patience by UCLA. They made the extra pass. They went down and set their pitch good. They were very patient on that offensive possession. 16-9, the lead, 7. And now we see UCLA in a zone defense. Two reasons teams have thrown zones up against Louisville is one, they're not a very good outside shooting team, and two, because of the youth, sometimes they don't recognize what defense is being thrown at them. So the Bruins with a chance to go further in front with 9.20 to go first half. Murray. Boy, he got that shooter's mentality. Jimmy the ball on hot. He buries the three. And he looks real relaxed when he gets the ball and he's open. Ten already for Murray. And now the Cardinals in dire need of a basket trailing by ten. defense just kind of packing things in and making Louisville take that outside shot. Sullivan works for his jumper. They just can't get it to go. And a whistle and a foul underneath. And it looks like it's going to go on hot good. Tracy Murray, one of the emotional players for UCLA, loves it when things go his way. Louisville making a lot of substitutions. UCLA is staying with their five. Syracuse leading Massachusetts. We understand some of you that were expecting to get that game in your area have not due to a technical problem, and you're still with us here in Tempe. We're working on it, folks. We'll keep you abreast of the score between UMass and the Orangemen. And as we go here, it's UCLA by 10. The starting five for UCLA has played very well together so far in this first half. Jenny Crum has been looking for a combination to work. Gracie Murray likely to take it anywhere once you cross midcourt the way he's shooting. And he will. <laughs> <laughs> Madkin down low to McLean. Now the 16 on the 
the shot clock. Matt Jennings will square up. Murray keeps it alive and scores again. A dozen for Murray. Jim Harris was saying yesterday that Casey Murray's the type of player where he lets the game come to him. He gets into a game. McCoy back in, replacing Jerome Malloy, a quick breather for McCoy. Now, Drew Sturridge is... Well, they won the Pac-10, a uh, very tough conference. Three teams that have been... Miller, the top seeded team in the West. In the white, the Bruins of UCLA leading 34-25 over the Louisville Cardinals. Jim Herrick's troops have led pretty much from the onset of this one. And Denny Crum's Louisville Cardinals and Myers have been very cold from the field. They really have, and, and you're trying to get the ball inside. Cornelius Holder, and only two free throws in that first half, really has to make a difference in the second half on the inside game for the Cardinals. I think if UCLA stays in the man-to-man, -man, it's going to benefit Louisville. They couldn't hit outside the zone in the first half. We'll see if they switch back to that. Here's McLean, guarded by Holden. And a whistle and a player control foul against McLean. Trying to back in on Holden. That's two fouls on McLean. A lot of teams really like to get physical with Don McLean. He became the Pac-10's all-time leading scorer early today on his first basket. The rebounding edge to the Bruins, and the winner goes on to meet New Mexico State. The Aggies with an 81-73 win over Southwestern Louisiana in our first game this afternoon. Our congratulations to the Aggies going to New Mexico, their home state, to play in the Sweet 16. Minor. Now it's five. The Cardinals within five of the one seed in the West, and we will keep you posted with video updates in the second half. You know, it seems like uh, ancient history now, but it was one week ago when we announced the tournament pairings in Kansas City. 12 points back and forth a little bit but really the Bruins pretty much in control of the ball game. They have been. When you talk about Matkins, 11 uh, points in the second half, he's really the defensive stopper. I go but all the way back to the opening game in college basketball this year when Matkins did a great job on team in that UCLA-Indiana matchup. Maybe something that we can uh, think about in the future. Yeah, that's entirely possible in the West. Indiana State, New Mexico State in the regionals. Florida State and Indiana have already made it to the West regionals as well. So the Bruins will go to the free throw line for the Bruins been a steady march to the line in the last five minutes of this game. UCLA leads by 12. They're the one seed in the West and headed now to Albuquerque to meet New Mexico State. Well, uh, Jim, for Danny Trump, uh, playing against his alma mater has been uh, both great and not so great. Of course, he lost in the semifinals to Wooden 75-74, but then won his national championship in 1980. Peace. Tournament champion, Syracuse. Might look for McCoy to do some damage. Syracuse addresses Harper Williams a lot better, both with McCray and others. The vital statistics. So Syracuse with one timeout, UMass with two. Possession arrow favoring Syracuse. Looking for Johnson down low. Oh, oh. Wow. and stole the basket for Dave Johnson. Well, when things are going well, they tell you to ride them. Jimmy Bayheim. The post up is so effective. The attention. Of all Massachusetts inside defensive on Johnson, still able to convert big time basket, JB. What kind of basket, Bill? Majorly. All right. Johnson looking for his 26th point of the evening. And it's a one point ball game with 115 left to play. We're going to double up a little. on the shot clock time just to get organized a little bit so they have a chance if the defense breaks down their first option. A lot of people like to get under 10. You end up empty. You have a 2-3 by Syracuse. This tells them at the end of regulation. They start before you get the chance. Yeah, now, now they're down to 10. McCoy. Loses the handle on it, but it stays at this end. Six seconds left on the shot clock as you take a look at John Calipari and now the Syracuse bench. 
35.3 seconds left in the game. Burgess has to watch the Harper alley up and force the ball outside. Herndon didn't realize how much time he was. goes up to the front, Miners break it easily to Marlon Maxey, the big slam five-point lead, and Roy Williams, the number one seed, not headed to Kansas City, last chance, Woodbury gets stripped by Chris Stewart, scrambles for the loose ball, hits, Howard hits the J, now there's an open man underneath, but he pulls up and knocks it down, and Chris Stewart and the Miners pull off the upset for Roy Williams, a very Difficult to see as he goes down to the number nine seed. Eddie Rivera and Marlon Maxey at celebration time. 66 to 60 is the final. Johnny Melvin with 18 points and five assists. And of course, for the Jayhawks, an extremely emotional loss. I'm proud of this team. I'm just like Coach you know What we accomplished, uh, I'm just proud of this team. Very tough, difficult to see, especially when you're number one seed. You think you got a chance to win it all. Think about how UTEP lost in their own state, facing the pressure defense. 33 turnovers against Delaware. The Spartans down on the Bearcat half court defense early. Now watch here, the basket by Corey Blount, and then they quickly burn them. They get it down to Dwayne Stevens, and Cincinnati is up by two early in a tight game. Bob Huggins says things aren't going right. Nick Van Exel sprains his ankle. Didn't feel well. He sat down for a while. Cincinnati started to take command. Herb Jones with a three. Anthony Buford finds range from the right wing. And then from the top of the key. Cincinnati up by 17. And Judd Heathcote is looking for answers. Now look at him turn to his head. He's going wacky. Now he switches. He goes to the matchup zone defense. But a little problem. He doesn't have the magic man. It's Mike Kelso like in 79. They're swinging the ball. Playing on a perimeter. That's the matchup, Mr. Saunders. Bob Huggins watches his lead, 17 points come apart. John Westbrook gets hot, takes the loose ball, and goes coast to coast, and lays it off the glass of the Spartans break. The pressure, and Chris Wojcinski finds Wayne Stevens, the big guy out there for the three. The lead is just seven at halftime. First play in the second half, Stevens again, another three. Meanwhile, the offense for the Bearcats in a state of disarray. A couple of players running into each other, and you get a traveling violation. 
And Jim Cincinnati finds a way there. Any time you can penetrate the zone on a dribble, as an Edsel did, and you can dish it out, and bam, you can get the three from Houston. Kabarski looking on as Sean Rashford hits the three. 27 on the day for Rashford. Spartans within five. They don't get any closer. Eric Martin works inside, off the glass, the phantom foul. 65-56 in a minute and a half to go. Anthony Buford puts the cap on it, flying to the glass. Anthony Buford with 21 points, including three of four beyond the three-point arc. As Cincinnati advances to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1974. The center of the court, no one stops the ball. Team gets right to the foul lane area, penetrates, and now he's got number four with the 45-degree angle drop. He's got another teammate shaping up on the wing for the three-point shot, but he says, no, I'm not kicking it up for the three. I'm getting the assist, baby. King to the diaper dandy. Weber, count it. You know, you thought that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was like the record know, came to an end. Four. <laughs> what was this? Four, three, two, <laughs> six. How far do you think they can go, Dick? I know you really like him, but what do you think about this guy? Well, I'll tell you, I thought they were going to have a lot of trouble with that temple zone defense. Stop laughing at me. You're not on camera now, John. <laughs> but anyway, I think right now. Right into the Sweet 16. Corey Williams nails a three-pointer, but Dick inside as well. Well, yeah, they were really tough on the inside. They had Mr. Houston, Mr. Hatcher and company took the ball up strong. Back on the outside, Williams hits another three. They have a 10-point lead, and Williams takes the feed from Byron Houston, makes a nice twisting move to the hall, and scores. And Jim's ball movement is key as well. There's no question about that. Watch here, Tim Lewis, number 23, guards Byron Houston inside. Oh, what a touch pass. You love it. Oh, for the easy hoop. Brian Reed's the big guy with that nice pass. Oklahoma State shooting 77% in the first half. They did turn it over a bunch of times. Great Gary finds D.J. Hunter. Hunter, though, misses the jumper. 25 turnovers for Eddie Sutton Cowboys. He's 12 points for two length. Good work by David Whitmore. Follows on miss and puts it back in. Green Wave failing by just six at halftime. Second half, Cowboys offensive clinic continues. First is Byron Houston with a follow-away. Then Houston... To John Sutton, spots up for the three. Cowboys ahead by 15, and again, the ball movement. Certainly, John, they knew they were going to get a lot of scraps from two lanes, and, hey, they worked on this. Look at that, right to the high post. Could have dumped it down, and Houston said, I think I'll take the easy two. More good passing reads. The Cornell hatches on the bounce pass underneath, drops it to Houston, jams it down then. Well, now we're going to watch a little backdoor play. We're going to see the backdoor cut. There it is. Sean Sutton makes TV Corral get excited. Not very Clark. Now, Terry Clark not excited at all. Houston to Hatcher to Williams. Lays it up and in. Great season for Tulane, but it comes to a close today. 87 to 71 is the final. Byron Houston and Corey Williams with 27 points apiece. Cowboys turning it over 25 times. That has to concern Eddie Sutton. But on his mind right now, the return trip the rough arena where he used to coach in Washington. The years that I spent in Kentucky were very enjoyable, except for the last one that wasn't uh, good for any of us. And uh, I say, say this before, that I think all Another the Another Final Four facing Louisville. Denny Crum against Jim Harris. A couple of former assistants of John Wood. UCLA comes out faster than they did, Jim. And they certainly did with rebound. Look at him. Dan Magnus from way down back. Gets his own rebound. And he hits Mitchell Butler. The easy lay -in. And once again, all right, Magnus. I'll do this shot again. I'm not going to get straight past it. Look at Then a little half-court Butler to a streaking Murray. Big dunk. UCLA is up by 10. For Louisville, nothing would go. Greg Miner misses. Badly. Cornelius Holden with a three. Nothing doing on this one either. Just even on the break. Yeah, even on the break, John. Three on two. Look at this. Keith McGree. Bad decision by the diaper dandy, and he misses. Benny Crumb's son, not liking what he sees at this point. Louisville rallies, agree with the steal. This time gives it up to Cornelius Holden. The Cardinals get within four. But UCLA's M&Mers take over. Madkin with a three. Four-point play as he's fouled. UCLA back up by 11 after a 9-2 run. Then John McClain, the Pac-10's all-time leading scorer right now. Passing Sean Elliott. His mother looking on, McLean with 23. His defense was cycling. Madsen takes it away from Legree. And then the finishing touch. Tyus Edney ahead to Mitchell Butler. Open, jams it down. Rough day for the Crump. This is from with John from the Seaford. <laughs> Big day for the Bruins, 85 to 69.
tied as the finals. Tracy Murray with 26 points and eight rebounds. Don McLean with 23 points, and will face the number 12 seed, New Mexico State, in the next round. Uh, Murray was just terrific today. He was terrific against Robert Morris. I know Dick says that uh, UCLA was going to go out in the early round, <laughs> so that's he's got to be the next game <laughs> against New Mexico State, and that is going to be a tough one because of you know location, right? The obvious again, they got to go play. They're the number one seed. They got to go to uh, New Mexico, though it's Albuquerque. I was I would assume there's going to be an awful lot of fans, though. You know, for uh, the folks from Las Vegas. Well, I said early casualty, James. I really did, and I was talking about if you're a number one seed, you got to get by the first three rounds. Mm -hmm. I really think that they're going to have some problems. They should still have too much in McLean and Murray. They got a break now catching New Mexico State, even though New Mexico State will play them tough. Sammy Crawford tough. And I have to say this, John. I agree with Tom Davis moaning, complaining about the uh. fact Duke playing in Greensboro, the fact that teams play near them with their fans behind them. It's tough enough to win in an environment. The committee doesn't have to do that anymore. In fact, I thought preliminary rounds okay. Now I say no. no. Everybody should have an equal chance. You. you shouldn't have 15,000 cheering for a team in the NCAA Big Ten. That's the only complaint I have with the committee. Other than that, Roy Kramer and his guys have done a super job. Got to be a politician. I know. Top him on the back good job, Dick. Very All right, good, good job. job. But I agree with you 100%. I think it's a I very like difficult mm -hmm. task to go to New Mexico. That's not going to be easy. Yeah, but certainly the committee could have no idea that a number 12 team Show is going to make it. But let me also say, I think Janine does a great job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move along now to the rest of the West in Tempe, Arizona. This is the Cinderella teams, and one of the teams we were just talking about. Southwestern Louisiana, the number 13 seed against New Mexico State, the number 12 seed. That's right, it will be the Aggie Invitational. Raising Cajuns on the run, Michael Allen out, lets the Todd Hill find Byron Stark. Jams it down, gets into the first half. Well, now they're going to beat the Aggies' pressure defense with good passing and offense. Marcus Stokes. Gonna take it with a little touch pass to Byron Stark, and they celebrate. Sam Crawford then helps keep the Aggies in as they're driving past four players off the glass and in. In the second half, they start to roll. Tony Moore with the miss. Crawford will grab the rebound, and then it's off to the races. He finds Cliff Reed for the long, long up and down, just like that. The Aggies trail by just one. Then with three minutes to go, tie game, Cajuns attacking on the offense. Watch Allen as they step the ball back. Not trying to really work, not trying to attack him. I know, and they got out of their offensive routine of attacking the basket. Right, and check it out. Okay, there's Marty Fletcher, top of your screen, and he's saying, hey, ready? Attack! Go! Attack! He's not asking the clock to move like a boss. Attack! But no, instead, they hold it out. Lose a lot of that offensive rhythm and that flow. And when that happens, you know what happens? You wind up taking a bad shot. Not the best shot. Could have gone, but it didn't go. All right, Cliff Reed then gets the rebound. Crawford pushes it up to Chris Hickman. And he gets fouled. Hickman's wife crossing her fingers in the stands. Now watch. Where do you wear the wedding band during the game? Ooh. On the... <laughs> His wife is tough. Don't wow. have to take it off. Hickman hits eight consecutive free throws down the stretch to ice the game. The Cajuns fall short, and the Aggies move to the sweet 16, 81 to 73. Cliff Reed with 21 points in the contest. Sam Crawford, 14 points and 10 assists in this one. So we have a number 12 seed that will go up against the number one seed there. Well, that's an interesting matchup, as we said earlier. I think Neil McCarthy's done a great job there when you think about the fact that even Jerry Clark, more good inside work by UMass. Lou Rowe with the fake, and then goes baseline and lays it in. He maps up by five, a great play by Syracuse. Do you want to see a great pass? This is a great bounce pass to Lawrence Moten from Adrian Autry. Love it. Big first half for Dave Johnson. Johnson gets the hoop and the foul, but the Minutemen will answer. Anton Brown, the lob to William Herndon. They hear it all year long. Rick Pitino looking on. That's for him. Syracuse up two at halftime. Tough battle for Mike Hopkins. You can see the blood flowing. Lawrence Moten. Great pass to McCray, he jams it down. They come back on the run. Jim McCoy, to Herndon, lays it off the glass. And John Calipari says, we want to make it into the Sweet 16 as UMass is up six. But the Orange come back. Adrian Archie comes up with a steal and finds Lauren Moat. Lawrence Moten, he jams it down. UMass by two late. Jim McCoy, though, travel. And the Orange down by two. 
Dave Johnson goes to work for the Syracuse bench. The Chief Hopkins with a foul on his head. UMass can't believe it. 64-64. Johnson off the glass. That ties it. McCoy for the win. But this will not go. And so we go to overtime. In overtime, Lawrence Moat, the freshman, along the baseline. Takes it. Point. Turns. Gets to the glass. Ties it at 68. UMass up by one. Yes. And then all of a sudden, Harper Williams are running out the clock. Shoots the long three. Is only his second three this year. Mike Hopkins, headache. Left from the gas dump to his head rather than that shot. As UMass wins it 77-71 in overtime. That's the final. UMass has won 14 consecutive games. They're also the selfie with the fake on Hoiberg. Wide open. Knocks down the three. Fifth healthy. Steals the ball for Roy Bayless and lays it in. But a three-point team like Kentucky can have breakdowns. So. Yeah, well, after Mass Burns lay-in on the inbound, we'll watch him right here with the lay-in. Mikulik now finds Justin Thigpen. There's Mikulik. I like him. And there's Justin Thigpen, baby. Goes up. These guys are good. They're going to be good next year. Young team. All right, Roy Bayless played well as well. Takes it to the glass. Kentucky getting themselves ready once again, though, as it was a close game at that point. John Wood to Andre Riddick, slams it down, kicks it, kicks it into Brad Pitt, and Kentucky continues their hot shooting. Dale Brown with a three. Then Pelfrey with another three. That lets Kentucky go inside to the monster match. Richie Farmer finds Matt Fern high low, off the glass, and tucks the shot for Johnny Orr. It really is. Look at Matt Fern. Gets straight to get position to get behind Eaton. Oh, look at that. Great. He gets the hoop and the foul. Kentucky fans loving it. Justin Big Ben, though, with a three. Iowa State down 10. Big Ben, another three. Career high, 32 points. Iowa State within seven. Rick Pitino says, it's time to get busy, guys. Randy Wood continues the hot shooting, though, and Iowa State can get no closer than four as Mama Kelsey looks on. 106 to 98 is the final. Jamal Matherin, 27 points and nine rebounds. But Johnny Orr, the coach of Iowa State, was extremely upset that Kentucky coach Rick Pitino kept stepping out of the coach's box. Well, I don't know if it has an impact on the game or, or not. What did they put the rule in for? What did they tell you to stay behind the thing for? If they're not going to call it, then the hell with it. Take it out. You're damn right, I think it makes an impact when a guy's standing up at the middle of the floor. <laughs> About 15 times. Hmm. What'd they say? <laughs> <laughs> what do they ever say? <laughs> a three-pointer by James Ford. I am sure that both you gentlemen know exactly how Bobby Clemens feels and exactly how George Rabin feels, but that is what this thing is all about. John, that is why I want to take my... That's what you say. You want to coach? You want to go back to coaching? That it is right there. That's what I say. I think I'd like to go back. I think one thing, Jim, is we look at the matchup right here. We look at Memphis State and Georgia Tech. The emotion in that game was something else with Georgia Tech winning, but now they play Anthony Hardaway. That's a heck of a matchup, and up on top, what a defensive battle that'll be Hoskins and Hudson. But what's interesting to see there is the seeding. Nobody higher than four. You lost one, two, and three. Now in the Southeast, Jim, the Buckeyes are still alive. And they're playing well, but North Carolina somehow gets it done. They're going to have to do it again. And look at Michigan, maybe next year's, you know, this year's Duke. But the next year, they may be picked number one in the country. No, I got Kansas. And if Oklahoma State wins, and Ohio State wins, you got OSU against OSU. <laughs> <laughs> I got Kansas next year, number one. Ohio State to beat Carolina. Oklahoma State to beat Michigan. Three of the four coaches in this bracket have all coached in the Final Four. What an experienced bracket. That. That'll help their teams. And I look for Duke, Kentucky, regional final because nobody's going to beat Duke. And I still think Richardson's in trouble. I think Duke's going to go to the Final Four. And also in this one, the top four seeds survive. So that's interesting as well. In the West, then, UCLA, the number one seed. But Indiana's still hanging around. Well, it's a rematch of our game. First game of the year, we had Hall of Fame Classic in Springfield. UCLA and Indiana. UCLA blew them out then. But this time, I see Indiana getting out and going Ooh. to Minneapolis. How are you going to go? All right. Uh, Indiana is the number two seed. UCLA, number one. When we come back, we'll wrap things up. We are down to 16, and there's plenty more to come in the weeks ahead. We'll all be at the Final Four. So we'll come as well. <laughs> 